Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. We've decided to revisit the centre of the region and find some hidden gems, places that are not quite so famous, but still just as beautiful. And today you find Ross, the dogs and me in the little village of Norton. It's spring, the sun is shining, the fields are full of minute lambs, the rooks are cawing in the trees. It is utterly beautiful. This little village was spotted by Ross as he drove by on the road along the ridge and he saw it from above and thought the perfect place for us to go and film. It's beautiful here. We're going to show you around. I hope you enjoy it. Driving along the B4068 from Stow on the Wold, Ross looked down to his right to see this sleeping little village. From the road above, it seemed to have it all. A beautiful church, a winding stream through its centre, with an ancient stone bridge spanning the flow. Surely a perfect Cotswold gem. Why was it that we hadn't been here before? Well, oddly enough, it was partly because of our valued friend and travelling companion, Herbert Evans. His description of this place in 1905 was anything but complimentary. He wrote of it, A prosaic little place enough, though if we are to believe Samuel Rudder, the second of the county's historians, one of the healthiest in England, boasting as it did a death rate of less than 1%. Its distinction on this count has not, however, resulted in investing it with any great attraction, and when we have looked at all that remains of the capital mansion, to wit, a cyclopean dovecote, square with four great gables, but in these latter days destitute of doves, we may leave the village without a sigh and continue our pursuit of the wind rush up the green valley that takes us to the Geitings. I think we can be forgiven for thinking that we should perhaps avoid burdening you with this little village. If it hadn't been for Ross's chance glimpse from the road, we would certainly have passed by. But it would have been a mistake. This little place has an air of peace and tranquility about it that to me at least is wonderfully attractive. The little village square is dominated by an enormous tree filled with rooks. At this time of year, they're extremely noisy. I'm not sure I'd like to live in the old centre of this village, even though the houses and cottages are beautiful. I suppose you just must get used to the racket. The church is probably 12th century in origin, but what we see is almost all late perpendicular, so 15th century onwards. The three-stage tower is a fine example, with buttresses on the lower stages and gargoyles, battlements and pinnacles with carved heads. There are two sundials painted on the walls on the south and west. The churchyard is beautifully kept, neat but not too manicured, loved but not smothered. We notice, at this time of uncertainty and worry, their support for the country of Ukraine. Inside, the font is octagonal, as usual, with decorations, four-leafed clovers and tracery, oddly similar to the north window in the north aisle. The choir space was created during a restoration in 1899. There's an interesting marble tablet, highly decorated, to Ambrose Olds. It says, son of Dr. William Olds, barbarously murdered by ye rebels in 1645. And then explains that Ambrose died with better fortune, for he escaped many and eminent dangers in battles, fought for ye honour and service of his king. The church's greatest treasure, however, is its pulpit. It's beautifully carved in stone in the late 15th century with lovely canopied panels and elegant tracery. What a pleasure it must be to preach from such a position. 
The village was extended across the river in the 16th century, but until 1819, the only way across was by a ford. The bridge was built in that year by the rector, John Hurd. Now the village extends nearly a mile along the river towards the old mill at the end. There are a few buildings worth noticing along the way, in particular the Baptist Chapel, which is one of the first to be built on this side of the river. Ross and I stopped for a bite of lunch at the Black Horse Inn, where we were welcomed with generosity. We were lucky to be here on a sunny spring day, and we sat outside feeling the world returning to a semblance of normality. We enjoyed this little place, and we're glad we didn't miss it altogether. I hope you've enjoyed this lovely trip around Norton. It's a really very pretty place. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and when you do, press the little bell button beside it, and then we'll notify you every time we put something up. We'll see you in the very near future.